this is really a special festival because uh, in a couple minutes we're going to have our council member uh, come up and uh, honor uh, two uh, stalwarts of our community. Uh, we have Marvin Anderson, we have Floyd Smaller that have been working as part of this community, building it up, building up the Rondo Days Festival, uh, just doing incredible work. But as we go around this entire city, uh, what makes neighborhoods great, what makes our community great, is the fact that all of you are willing to come out to be a part of this festival, to, be a, to support our local businesses, to live here, to invest here, to send our children to schools here. Everything that you all do makes this such a special place to live. So I get to, uh, I get to be, have the honor of being mayor. I get to take credit for all the work that all of you do uh, to the extent that the city supports great festivals like this through our, star, our cultural star grants, et cetera, that's great. But ultimately, it's about all of you that are out here supporting this. So at this point, I want to give it up for our council member, Nathaniel Kalik, and he's going to come up and do a little honor for some incredible heroes of this community. Good afternoon. It is with great honor that I have the opportunity this afternoon to recognize two outstanding individuals that have dedicated their lives for the last 30 years to keep the memory of Rondo alive. Over the past 15, 20 years, the, the event has gotten bigger and better. And this year, without doubt, the 30th year anniversary was the best. And I think one of the most touching moments was the dedication of the Red Caps room down at the Union Depot, where they took a photograph of 30 or 40 brothers that was working down there and went back and identified each and every one of them, took the time to go back and talk to their descendants to find out what they were doing at this present time and some of the things that they found out that in spite of racism, and in spite of making low wages, they were able to build a foundation and to help their children and grandchildren to aspire to higher and better things. And for that, we will be internally grateful to Floyd and Marvin. The other thing, in 1956 all the way up to 1982 or so, there was hardly little mention of Rondo. But through the work of Floyd and Marvin, not only have books been written, but we have a exhibit down at the Minnesota Historic Society to keep our memories alive because these young folks need to understand that how we did it back in the day, in spite of the obstacles that was confronting us, we still ride. And so it's with honor that I want to call my legislative aide who worked hard. We had a couple days to put this together and no nicks uh, got on the case and we were able to get the necessary approval to have the proclamation and also the signs that will be dedicated to these, to these two uh, young brothers. Thank you. So working in the Word One office, there are good days and there are incredible days. And this is an incredible day for me. And uh, it's an honor to be a part of um, writing this resolution that was passed by the city council just this past week. St. Paul City Council Resolution. Whereas Marvin Roger Anderson and Floyd G. Smaller Jr. were both raised in the historic Rondo neighborhood of St. Paul. And whereas Rondo Avenue and the surrounding area was the heart of St. Paul's largest African-American neighborhood, serving as a home to generations of African-American families, as well as hundreds of African-American businesses and community institutions. And whereas the construction of I-94 in the 1960s devastated the Rondo neighborhood by displacing thousands of residents and demolishing hundreds of businesses that along with Rondo Avenue itself were removed to make way for the interstate. And whereas in 1982, Marvin Roger Anderson and Floyd G. Smaller Jr. established Rondo Avenue, Inc. as an organization dedicated to sharing the contributions of African Americans and the rich cultural history of the Rondo community to the city of St. Paul and the state of Minnesota. 
And whereas Rondo Avenue, Inc. has served as a vital platform for bringing descendants of the Rondo community, as well as newer residents of all backgrounds together to celebrate the history and enduring legacy of the Rondo community through the annual Rondo Days Festival and other endeavors. And whereas in 2013, the community celebrated the 30th annual Rondo Days Festival, the largest and most successful event yet, the opening of the Rondo Neighborhood Exhibit at the Minnesota History Center, and the dedication of the Red Caps Room at the newly renovated St. Paul Union Depot. And whereas, because of the decades of hard work, dedication, and sacrifices of Marvin Roger Anderson and Floyd G. Smaller Jr. over the past 30 years, the memories and stories of the Rondo community will be preserved for the benefit and education of future generations of St. Paul residents. And whereas the co-naming of a street after leaders who have served the community with distinction is an acceptable way to honor their contributions. And whereas the childhood homes of Marvin Roger Anderson and Floyd G. Smaller were located on Rondo and St. Anthony Avenues near Lexington Parkway and Western Avenue respectively. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Concordia Avenue between Lexington Parkway and Dale Street is hereby co-named Marvin Roger Anderson Avenue, and that St. Anthony Avenue between and that St. Anthony Avenue between Victoria Avenue and Western Avenue is hereby co-named Floyd G. Smaller Jr. Avenue. And that appropriate street signage will be placed by the Department of Public Works at the appropriate corners of Lexington Parkway, Victoria Avenue, Dale Street, and Western Avenue. Signed, all seven members of the St. Paul City Council. Testing. Hello, friends and residents of Rondo. It gives me a great pleasure to thank the people that provided this opportunity for Marvin and I to say thank you, Rondo community. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. Thank you, uh, Paul Williams, uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, City Council. And a whole lot of thanks go to the guy that really pushed this thing ahead for Marvin and I. A whole lot of thank yous. And I really don't know, Marvin and I talked about it. We don't know how we're going to thank this guy. His name is Neek Kalik. And I'm going to put Davis on the end of that to make sure everybody know who this fellow is. I grew up with all of his aunties, uncles, all the ransoms, a great family. And he's a great person, and we're trying to talk him into doing some other things. We'll tell you about that later. But in the meantime, I'd like to say my wife, for 53 years, she wasn't able to make it today because she's home sick. And I'll be getting back to her shortly after we're done here. But my, most of my family, my nephews, my nieces, my sisters, uh, my grandkids, raise your hand, little granddaughter, put it up there. Those are my, so she, I know she asked me, she said, Grandpa, are they really going to put your name on a pole? I told her, yeah, honey, it won't be a tree this time. It's going to be a pole. <laughs> so she, and I'd like to thank all of you people that supported us over these 30 years that Marvin and I and our work wasn't in vain. And thanks to Marvin that he talked me into this some years ago after I tried a few trial and errors and mom and the poppers and the olds of the goodies. But Marvin and I go back further than people know. We worked together, we played together, we talked together, we did a whole lot of things together. And I want to tell you, it's one, this is one great young man. And it gives me a big pleasure to introduce my partner for life, joined to the hip together, Marvin R. Anderson.
Thank you so much. I have been, uh, Foley and I have been friends for over 60 years. And I accept this award, this wonderful honor that has been given to us on behalf of all of the, the waiters, the porters, the cooks, the maids, the chauffeurs, the packing house workers, all of the people that made Rondo community what it was. I can't tell you how much this means to me. I want to thank all of you for coming out here. I want to thank Michael and this Selby Jazz Fest, 10 years now. We should give them a round of applause for allowing us to share the stage with all these wonderful musicians on such a glorious day. I want to thank the mayor. I want to thank Noel Nix. We want to thank the city council. I want to join Floyd in extending our deepest appreciation and thanks to Councilman Nick Kalik for bringing this to the city council and for having them unanimously aw awarding us this opportunity to say we can co- Never did like Concordia Avenue. What about the rest of you? <laughs> it's always will be Ronald to us. I want to thank my wife, Gloria, for allowing me to, to be a part of this. My daughter, AZ, and my granddaughter, Isaiah, and Floyd's grandkids and his children. Thank you all. I'm speechless, and that's very hard for me to be. But thank you all for coming and being a part of this. I see my niece, Audrey, and Patrick there. Thank you, everybody. Have a great time. We'll see you next July 2014. Rondo 31. This is the uh, Lay Hammond Award, a guy who keeps music, especially jazz, on the minds of the community, Mr. Felix James. Mr. Felix James of Walker West Music Academy. I want to thank him and read this plaque, but first I got to get him to hold this mic. This is the Lay Cammon Award, Jazz Award, awarded to Mr. Felix James for his years of supporting up and coming mu musical artists in St. Paul and throughout the Twin Cities, and for his contribution of forging the best this region has to offer in musical development, Mr. Felix James. Yeah, I'm, take, I'm accepting this award on behalf of, of not just myself, but the work that we do at Walker West Music Academy. Reverend Carl Walker and Grant West, who provide this space, the opportunity for us to do what we do there. So I'd like to say thank you, uh, Michael, and the Selby Jazz Festival for this honor. I really I cherish it. And uh, after so many years of doing what we do, we still have more growth going on right now. So for young kids who would like to experience the growth and beauty and the development of jazz, hey, we're still doing it. So thank you very much for this award, and thank you, everybody, for being here. All right. All right. Thank you, Felix, very, very much. Watch your step. <laughs> A lot of wires over here. This next uh, award is called the Merle Harris Award. This award is for a person who uh, exemplifies humanitarian and community. This lady really needs no introduction. Her name is Miss Mary Kay Boyd. Mary Kay. There she is. Isn't she lovely?
Hey, Mary Kay. Thank you, honey. The Merle Harris Community Award, awarded to Miss Mary Kay Boyd for her outstanding contributions to the equality in education and to community development, for her tireless efforts on behalf of the welfare of our community. The Merle Harris Award goes to Miss Mary Kay Boyd. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. You know, I was raised in this community, and I was so proud to see Roger and Floyd have their names on the streets. Because in the future, there are children who will not know of Rondo, but when they see the names, they'll start to ask the questions and learn about Rondo. How many of you here see yourselves as educators? You are all educators. This is the village that raises the children. And remember, you are the educators of our future. I am so proud to receive this. And I just want to tell you, on October 26th, there will be a gathering of celebrating you, the community educators. Watch for the time and place at Golden Time. Thank you. I'm proud to receive this and serve. <laughs> 